Legacy of the Survivor. Marsh, under control of Ruin, the evil being that Vin released from the well, is performing hemorrhagy on a captured Terraceman. Hemorrhagy is a process by which power is charged and transferred to another by use of a metal spike. Marsh can resist Ruin for control of his own mind and body, but Ruin's power is so great that this is futile. Several months have passed since the release of Ruin. Our crew have been seeking out the remaining four storage caches the Lord Ruler hid containing supplies and secrets that he engraved on a metal plate inside each one. Lord Elland alone arrives at Vediton, a town currently ruled under a local ska man named Fatrin. Vediton contains the fourth storage cache and the engraving hidden inside will reveal the location of the final storage cache suspected to contain the Lord Ruler's mythical ATM stash. Elland, with an air of regality, convinces Fatrin to relinquish control of his city and its people over to him in order to quickly combat an incoming Kolos invasion. Tensoon has been imprisoned in the Condra homeland after having confessed his betrayal to them, residing in a pit with no bone structure to form around awaiting his sentence. He can feel the presence of Condra in pain of being lifted out of his pit by hooks. He is given a skull, but through manipulation of the first law, the Chondra begin burning him with acid, forcing him into death. Tensoon, however, is quick to form the necessary components for speech and demands judgment. The guards urge him against this public trial, but Tensoon persists. Elend, rather than playing defense, pushes his makeshift army into leading a reckless charge into the Coloss, wishing to take them by surprise. His plan works, and with the help of a little emotional allomancy, he is able to keep his army's morale high, and together are able to kill an impressive amount of Coloss. Just before things begin to turn against them, Vin materializes amongst the Coloss from the sky and begins her expected slaughter. Soon they are able to break the Coloss and begin taking control of them, willing them to their side, as planned, baiting out their leader, a Steel Inquisitor. Together, Elend and Vin are able to defeat the Inquisitor. Vin worryingly takes note that this Inquisitor was much faster than any she had encountered before. Sazed and Breeze await Yasti's uncle, Otto Lakal's signature on a treaty submitting his kingdom to Ellen's rule. Whilst waiting, Sazed continues analyzing the many different religions in his copper mind, questioning them, looking for contradictions, and then disproving them, unable to find truth in any of them after the loss of his love, Tendwil. An aide appears bringing the signed treaty. Marsh regains control of his mind for a short time and finds himself in a Coloss camp accompanied by several fellow Inquisitors. He notices many of them have new hemallergic spikes charged by the death of Terrace Keepers. Marsh worries that he will never gain enough control over himself to commit suicide, which is the best he can hope for in thwarting whatever plan Ruin has for him. He begins to wish Ruin would just keep control over him permanently as to allow him to see beauty in the destruction of the world. Tensoon consumes a new body and is led by members of the fifth generation, including Varcel, into the Trust Warren for trial. Among the hundreds of Chondra is Milan of the seventh generation, a younger female who idolizes Tensoon. Kanpar of the second generation, one generation above Tensoon's own third generation, questions Tensoon, and when it comes to why Tensoon broke his contract with Zane, Tensoon claims he was following a greater contract. The first contract, the one that was made between the Chondra and Father, the Lord Ruler. Tensoon claims that since Vin killed Father, that makes her mother, and that their first contract transfers to her being the one now opposing Ruin. Tensoon reveals to them that Vin now knows of their emotional, allomantic weakness, and that they should pledge themselves to her. Kanpar dismisses Tensoon's pleas and declares that his punishment will come in one month's time. Ellen and Vin now have control over the remaining Coloss and upon further inspection of the dead Inquisitor discover an extra pewter spike protruding from the creature's heart. They speculate that this has to be the cause for its increased speed. Upon demand, Fatrin leads Ellen and Vin into the ministry building containing the storage cache. This one contains a wealth of food supplies which will help to sustain Ellen's people in Luthadel. They seek out the numbered engraved metal plate and read the message left there by the Lord Ruler. The plate talks of the already discovered Malatian 
Lithium the Eleventh Metal, that Vin used to assist her in discovering the Lord Ruler's weakness. The engraving also gives away the location of the final storage cache in Fadric City. There's also a warning indicating that Ruin has the ability to discover anything that they speak or write, that only their thoughts are truly safe. For their own good, Elend exposes the survivors to the mist in order to give them immunity. A small percentage are killed by the mist, with the rest becoming sick. The majority remain unaffected, but now none of them need fear the mists again. Vin questions the one Coloss under her control to learn more about their origin. This one curiously named himself Human. Human is unable to help her beyond sharing that there are no Coloss children. Ellen sends the now immune refugee survivors to Luthadel. Sazed and Breeze reach the army and are greeted by Orianne. Sazed reveals to Vin of his depression and Vin leaves him the picture of the flower that had originally belonged to Mare. In order to refocus, Ellen calls a meeting between the crew and discuss the plan to retrieve the final two caches, in her toe and Fadric City. The one in her toe, Vin was able to sneak in previously and read the engraving, but the city remains out of their control. Part 2 Cloth in Glass. Spook is now a full tin savant, for he has not stopped flaring tin for over a year now despite the long term effects on his body, never wishing to feel useless again. Wishing to prove his worth, Spook has been spying on the leader of her toe, Quellian, known to his people as the Citizen. As a side benefit to his spying, he also gets to see Beldra, the Citizen's beautiful sister that Spook is very much attracted to. The Citizen has a twisted rule in which he orders the death of anyone with noble blood dating back a few generations, claiming that he is following the survivor's wishes. Kelsier's wishes. Spook, wearing a blindfold to help shield his extra sensitive tin eyes from the sun, follows Dern, his informant in her toe, to the executions, where a group of nobles are being burned in a house alive. Dern tells Spook to count the skulls, insinuating that the dead won't match the number of nobles seemingly burned alive. Spook manages to work his way through the crowd to Beldra, speaking to her of her brother's atrocities and how he must kill him. He is noticed by three guards who turn out to be Alamancers, which is odd because the Citizen supposedly rejects anyone with noble blood. This revelation makes the Citizen a hypocrite. During the fight, one of the guards stabs through his companion in order to stab Spook as well. Spook then loses consciousness. Hammond and Ellen discuss whether they should expose their army to the Miss or not. Vin talks to Human and ultimately agrees with him that the Miss hate her, having noticed how they pull away from her. Elend ultimately decides to subject his army to the Mists in order to ensure his army is immunized before securing Fadric City. Demu is among those who become sick. Sazed, Breeze, Orianne, Captain Gordel, and 200 soldiers travel toward Urto. Gordel leads his soldiers to Luthadel to resupply while Sazed temporarily takes his leave of them. Sazed arrives at the pits of Hath Sin, where the terrorist people have relocated to and is greeted warmly by his people. Spook regains consciousness only to find himself in a burning building. A familiar voice sounds in Spook's head, urging him to a desk containing vials of metal. Spook downs the vial, expecting to burn tin, but the voice, which Spook now realizes is Kelsier, tells him to burn the pewter. And Spook, by some miracle, is able to, using it to escape and seek asylum, urged on by Kelsier to enact revenge. Tinsoon, back in his prison, is approached by his friend, Milan, who wishes for him to escape, telling him how Ruin is ravaging the land. Tinsoon is hesitant to rebel, also realizing that there are undoubtedly spies listening in on everything he says. But Tinsoon decides to use this to his advantage, and decides to plant a seed for the spies, speaking of how much he despised the dog's body he wore upon arriving. Milan leaves angered by Tinsoon's lack of conviction during their conversation. Ellen tells Vin how he's becoming more and more like the Lord Ruler, like by exposing his soldiers to the mists. Vin counters by saying that Ellen has tried to do good, like outlawing children from being snapped, because of how inhumane it is. Ellen counters by saying that perhaps that was a mistake, for Alamancers are his best hope in defeating Ruin. 
Demu survives the sickness and Vin discovers from reports that the exact percentage of people affected by the mists is always 16%. She feels that this is a significant discovery but is unsure by what it actually means. Sazen meets with the Terrace Elders and tells them he cannot be the leader they want him to be, also learning from them that none of the Terrace have been stricken down with the sickness or death from the mists. Spook relives his tragic past in a fever dream from his abusive upbringing to the moment clubs traveled at the request of Spook's mother, clubs a sister, to take the boy away, likely saving his life in the process. Tensoon is still of two minds on whether or not he should escape. Ultimately, he decides when Varcel and some of the other Chondra appear ordering him to consume the dog's body. Unknowingly, they had just given him his means to escape, confirming that the seed he planted when talking to Milan had borne fruit. Ellen's army reaches Fadric City, Lord Set's homeland, and Ellen, Hammond, Set, and Vin discuss their best options for taking control of the city, realizing that the city's defenses will make it harder to conquer. Not wanting to assassinate King Yeoman, the obligator ruling over the city, they ultimately decide to lay siege and have Vin scout within to gather more info from Set's informants. Spook awakens and is more than impressed by his newly found thug ability. He also notices a sliver of a blade protruding from his chest, realizing that the piece of metal must have broken off from the sword that stabbed him. He begins to pull at the metal, but Kelsier's voice stops him, telling him to leave it in as a memento to his survival. Spook agrees and then leaves for a bar, but discovers that the people inside are speaking of him, how he was a part of Kelsier's old crew. And wishing to avoid attention, Spook quickly leaves. Vin sneaks into Fadric City alone and meets with Set's informant, Slow Swift. Slow Swift is an elderly man who tells Vin Yeoman has been a good leader offering stability and order to the people even mentioning how regular balls are still being held. And it isn't until Vin brings up the apocalyptic nature of their world that he agrees to assist her. So he speaks of Yeoman's misplaced loyalty to the Lord Ruler despite his death. Vin then goes to seek out the second informant, Hoyd, but chooses not to for her instincts get the better of her. So instead, she scouts out Yeoman's palace and sees the evening ball being held and begins feeling alimantic pulses as if there is a mistborn nearby. But she is unable to pinpoint its source and so returns to camp. Vin and Ellen agree that their best course of action is to crash one of the balls being held in the city to talk with Yeoman directly, along with hopefully being able to get into the final storage cache. Sazed, Gorodel, Orion, and Breeze all arrive at her toe and are immediately summoned to meet with Quellian. The citizen declines joining Ellen's alliance, but does allow them to stay within the city. Spook leads them to the Canton of Inquisition building to use as a base of operation, and then into the storage cache where they soon realize that all the canals are barren because all the water has been diverted into this underground lake. Ellen and Vin attend the ball being held at Keep Oriel, with Ellen astonished that Vin was able to procure such a stunning dress. They provide their names and titles at the door and are announced to much surprise by the ball goers. Ellen and Vin split up to mingle among the guests, and Vin finds herself quickly falling back into the flow of things from when she used to pose as the Lady Valette. Sazed seeks out the metal plate within the Urto storage cache, the one Vin had already seen detailing Electrum. When burned, Electrum puts the user on a level playing field with an opponent burning Atium, plus with the added benefit of being much less rare. Spook asks after religious advice, confessing to Sazed that he thinks Kelsier watches over them. Sazed no longer preaching religions cannot fully help Spook. Spook, though, is able to help Sazed by explaining that Sazed probably stopped preaching religions because that's what Tindwell would have wanted. This gives Sazed pause, and he considers Tindwell's influence over himself. Ellen encounters his old friend Teldon at the ball and they reminisce on the past. Teldon accuses Ellen of becoming a new Lord Ruler. Ellen denies this, saying he is only doing what is necessary. He leaves his once friend and meets with Yeoman, who wears a bead of Atium on his forehead. They debate, but ultimately Yeoman refuses to let Ellen inside the storage cache. He meets back up with Vin, who is relishing in the attention given to her by the noblewomen. They partake in their first dance and Ellen jokingly takes out a book, mid-dance, to Vin's disapproval. After the dance, they make their grand exit by steel pushing themselves from the ball, agreeing that they will have to attend the next one in order to sneak into the storage cache. Tensoon is led into the trust warren to face his judgment, but uses the dog's body's enhanced agility and strength to escape and seeks out Vin. <laughs> Thank you.
Part 3, The Broken Skies. Marsh walks through a small town in the central dominance near Mount Tyrion. The town is full of starving people despite the fact that the area is in Ellen's protected zone. Under the influence of Ruin, Marsh charges a bronze hemorrhagic spike by stabbing a smoker through the heart with it. He then leaves and watches as the volcano erupts, dooming the town. Spook tracks down Dern in the Harrows, confronting him about the rumors he has been spreading regarding Spook. Dern claims he is trying to undermine Quellian by showing the people that the citizen is trying to kill a member of Kelsier's old crew. Kelsier attempts to convince Spook to strike down the citizen before he can hurt anyone else close to Spook. Spook dismisses this for now. One of Dern's henchmen, Franson, approaches Spook asking him for help in rescuing his sister from being executed by Quellian. Spook agrees, feeling more confident in himself, but requests assistance with something in return. Elend and Set discuss the siege and Elend agrees to poison the water supply and to intimidate the outlying citizens among the outskirts of Fadric City. But Elend refuses to let anyone die from this. Set criticizes Elend for pulling his punches, especially when considering the limited time frame they have. Elend considers this wondering if he ought to invade Fadric's by force or assassinate Yeoman, but continues to resist this path. Demu awakens from his sickness and asks to be relieved of his position feeling that Kelsier deemed him unworthy in his faith by having him fall ill in the mists. Elend attempts to assuage Demu's worries that Kelsier punished him and questions Demu on the strange occurrence with the number 16. Demu believes the number 16 is a significant number in the faith of the survivor, pointing out many instances that 16 is relevant in regards to both Vin and Kelsier, in the manner in which those who become sick either die or get better within the 16 days. They are interrupted by shouting. The shouting is from an attack on their camp. Vin quickly starts dispatching the raiders and then leaves to chase after the Mistborn she senses once again. And once again, she is unable to track the source of the elusive pulsing. Upon returning, Ellen informs her that the attack was a distraction, with the real target being their dormant Coloss army, that was barraged with heavy siege equipment suffering losses up to 20,000. Ellen transfers 1,000 of the remaining Coloss over to Vin's control. Vin speaks with Human, who requests her in help in making more Coloss. Confused by this prospect of creating Coloss, Vin pushes Human to reveal to her the process and follows the Coloss as he rips the skin off of one of his dead brethren in order to remove some of the spikes placed beneath. He then enters the wounded medical tent, grabs an unconscious soldier, and finally, realizing in utter horror how Coloss are made, Vin stops him from going any further. Coloss are made by the use of hemallergic spikes on humans. Spook watches as Franson and some fellow Ska assist in excavating the burned building revealing nine skulls, which is significant seeing as Spook knows ten people were to be burned in that building. He then begins piecing it together that there are hidden exits in order to extract the wanted misting from their fiery death. He tells Franson that this knowledge will help in saving his sister. Sazed and Breeze sit in a tavern among some local ska, pleading the case as to why Elend would make a much better leader for them than the citizen, and his twisted notions of how to deal with nobles. The ska claim that outside interference is unnecessary since the survivor of the flames will deal with Quellian. When asked after, Breeze and Sazed are told to come to the execution the following day and witness the survivor for themselves. Tensoon retrieves two iron hemallergic spikes once belonging to Orsir that he hid before returning to his homeland for trial. He absorbs them, thus giving him the blessing of potency, a great increase to his physical strength, pairing well with his existing blessing of presence. He then heads towards Luthadel to seek out Vin. Vin, Elend, Hammond, Lord Set, Njordan, and Demu discuss how Inquisitors are made. Based on all the knowledge presented to them, they are able to deduce that Inquisitors are made by charging hemallergic spikes by driving them through mistings, providing a reason for why Ska mistings were hunted in order to replenish the Inquisitor ranks. 
They then theorize that this same method is used to create Coloss and Chondra, and with further reasoning assume they all have the same weakness to being controlled through emotional allomancy, which would make sense as to how Ruin is able to control the Inquisitors to do his bidding. Ellen concludes that they need to continue looking for patterns in order to undermine Ruin. Demu tells Vin and Ellen about how the soldiers who were sick for a long time are being ostracized by their fellow soldiers. Ellen tells Demu to form a new division of these mist-fallen soldiers. A messenger arrives from Luthadel bringing news of riots and pillaging of food stores and a request for aid by King Penrod. Vin realizes that they have to succeed in taking Fadric since they are running out of time. She pleads to the mist to help her as they did during her fight with the Lord Ruler, but as always, is ignored. Sazed Breeze and Ulrian attend the executions among the other onlookers. Spook, as he expected, finds a secret area hidden within the building, and with it finds a group of guards liberating one of the prisoners in Alamancer for Quellian. Guided by Kelsier's voice, Spook begins killing the soldiers but finds himself trapped within the burning building along with the young girl Maylee. Franson's sister. Bree says it and Orian watch stunned as Spook, revealed to them as the survivor of the flames, leaps from the burning building, saving the girl prisoner from the fire. Orian quickly riots the crowd's emotions to charge the remaining soldiers and allow Spook an opening for escape. Marsh stealthily enters Luthadel, traveling through the city to keep venture. He thinks of how he was turned into an Inquisitor as he prepares his newly made spike on King Penrod. Under Ruin's control, Marsh attacks Penrod, holding off the guards for a time in an attempt to make it look like a struggle, despite Marsh's insurmountable abilities as an Inquisitor, before finally stabbing Penrod in the heart with the spike and leaving it there. Marsh observes in secret as surgeons confer about Penrod Penrod deciding to leave the spike in place since they aren't able to safely remove it without killing Penrod, as the spike penetrated his heart. Plus, even with the spike, Penrod appears in good health. Everything going according to Ruin's plan, Marsh then departs. Ellen and Vin are followed by the mysterious Mistborn, but ignored as they travel to the ball at the Canton of Resource. At the ball, they split up and Vin mingles at the party before setting off for her mission to locate the storage cache. She detects a couple of Mistings, a Smoker, and a Tenai tailing her at the party. She sees Slow Swift at the party and asks him for two men to help her, and he agrees to have them meet her on the patio. She stands on the patio waiting for Ellen to create a prearranged distraction, and when it happens, she attacks the women, knocking them out and having the two friends of Slow Swift conceal their unconscious forms, so that she can move about undetected. She changes into more appropriate attire for subterfuge in search of the storage cache. Ellen challenges Yeoman to a duel to settle their dispute over the city. Yeoman declines, stating he would be at a great disadvantage against a Mistborn. Yeoman claims he earned the right to rule, and Ellen counters that since he can control the Coloss, like the Lord Ruler, that he inherited the Lord Ruler's right. He continues these sporadic arguments to keep Yeoman distracted as long as possible in order to give Vin the necessary time to seek out the cash. Vin descends below ground, finding several corridors, one of which is guarded. She uses emotional allomancy to distract these and other guards and finds her way, after a while, into the storage cache. However, after she gains access, she gets locked in. Ellen and Yeoman's debate is interrupted by the appearance of one of the two spies that Vin incapacitated. Ellen decides to attack Yeoman to see if he is a Mistborn, choking him, but eventually letting go when Yeoman doesn't fight back effectively. Yeoman stabs Ellen and seems unnaturally fast, leading Ellen to burn Electrum, which confuses Yeoman who was burning Atium. Ellen thinks Yeoman is a Mistborn and withdraws back to his camp, surprised that Yeoman doesn't pursue. He waits for Vin for hours before getting a note from Yeoman stating that he had captured her. Vin realizes the stone door she is trapped behind was sabotaged by having all the metal removed from it so that it couldn't be pushed allomantically. She senses a presence inside the cavern with her, and it turns out to be her dead brother, Reen. <laughs> Part 4 Beautiful Destroyer Vin confronts Reen, demanding who or what he really is. She focuses on the allomantic pulsing, 
and realizes that they match the ones from the Well of Ascension, and that the creature is Ruin. Ruin says that it has always been with her, even when she couldn't see it, since she was a child. Vin realizes that Reen's haunting voice that has been taunting her, manipulating her emotions and her decisions was Ruin all along. This idea that Reen was not just a manifestation of her own insecurities makes her question everything he ever said to her, unsure of what was her and what was it. Sazed, Breeze, and Orian await Spook's return to the storage cavern, and speculate on him being the survivor of the flames and his ability to jump two stories without so much as a scratch. Sazed thinks that there are no known examples of an Alamancer gaining powers after snapping. Spook visits Beldra in her garden, telling her why she thinks she always appears sad. She warns him that she will summon the guards. Ignoring this warning, he asks her to leave with him and that he was a member of Kelsier's crew and that he will kill the citizen and liberate the city. Beldra starts screaming to summon the guards and Spook leaves since he doesn't want their blood on his hands, ignoring Kelsier's orders to kill Quellian. Spook returns telling Sazed and Breeze that they should spread rumors about the Alamancers that Quellian is secretly gathering by smuggling them out of the burning buildings in order to prove him a hypocrite and turn the people against him. Spook asks Sazed to try to get the water flowing to the canals again, and Sazed reluctantly agrees to this request, even though it will require him to wear his long discarded metal mines, in order to research. Spook declines for now an explanation of how he survived a two-story drop unscathed from a burning building, asking that Sazed just trust him for the time being. Ellen stands in the mists worrying about Vin, but also having faith in her ability to take care of herself. Lord Set tells Ellen that the siege isn't working and that they should attack Fadrix and then return to Luthadel. They are interrupted by a disturbance and Ellen leaves to investigate, and it turns out to be a brawl between the Mistfallen and the other soldiers, which Ellen helps break up. Ellen orders Demu to march with the Mistfallen back to Luthadel to assist Penrod. Ellen goes to Njordan's tent to check change his battle tactics against Yeoman. Vin finds the metal plate in the darkness and reads it by touch. The Lord Ruler's words reveal that he had hid Ruin's body well, and that Ruin is not omnipotent, also revealing that Ruin is not whole without his body, and that he is most likely searching for it, and that it is possible to defeat him. Vin is surprised by the cave door opening. Sazed, having completed the necessary research, says he's ready to start construction on redirecting the water back into the canals. Gordel shows up to say Beldra has appeared, asking to speak with Spook. Beldra meets with Sazed, Breeze, Orian, and Spook in the Canton building and pleads for them not to kill Quellian. Spook has a conference away from Beldra and decides to hold her hostage, while spreading rumors that she defected from her brother. Vin uses her last alimantic vial and exits through the now open cave door, past several men using a steel push to try to escape through a trap door in the ceiling but fails because the trapdoor has weights on top of it to keep it from opening. Teldon Hastings approaches her and he tells her that she will be freed from the cavern if she agrees to drink drugged wine. Out of options, Vin takes the wine and in a last ditch effort, burns Duralamin and Pewter to try to stave off its effects. It fails and she falls unconscious. Ellen leaves and uses steel pushes to travel toward an area where a Coloss army was sighted. He locates the army, attacking a village, and starts fighting and killing the Coloss. A sole man versus an entire army of brutes. After wearing them down, he is able to use a Duralamin pole to take control of his new recruits. He heads back towards their encampment outside of Fadrix with a significant addition to his Coloss army. On the way back, Ellen feels the weight of his hardships and the impossible task of defeating Ruin ahead of him and falls to his knees in the ash-ridden landscape, ready to give up. The mist figure materializes to him, pointing northeast. Ellen comes up with a way to communicate with the figure using yes and no questions to determine what it's trying to tell him. He is able to determine that the mist figure does not want him to attack Fadric City, that the mists are not killing people, and that it may be possible to defeat Ruin. The encounter revigorates Ellen, though he is not entirely sure why. What Ellen didn't know was that he had just witnessed the death of a god, for the mist figure is preservation. 
Tinsoon arrives in Luthadel searching for Vin, and worries that Straff Venture may have won due to the awful state the city was in, being overcrowded and ash-filled. He proceeds to keep Venture to eavesdrop on a couple of guards, but doesn't learn anything about Vin's whereabouts. He thinks of a new plan, however, going to where Orsir buried Kelsier's bones, and absorbing them as a new disguise. Tinsoon returns to the keep in Kelsier's form, and interrogates the guards who are members of the Church of the Survivor about the condition of the city, King Penrod, and Ellen and Vin's whereabouts. They tell him that Penrod is mad and that they think Ellen is in her toe. Tinsoon tells the men to seek shelter when the mists vanish, and then he leaves. Back at the church, he tells more followers to seek shelter underground, then he switches back into the wolfhound form and heads for Urto, though he takes Kelsier's bones along with him. Spook talks with Beldra, slowly building a bond between them. She tells him that she is half ska and that she was going to be executed, but was saved when the final empire was overthrown. Beldra says that Spook is like Quellian, but he denies this. Spook speaks of his life in Kelsier's crew, of Sazen and Breeze allowing him to give orders even though he feels like he isn't really in charge. He speaks of Vin and Ellen, and promises at Beldra's request to not harm Quellian while trying to save the city. Spook then departs. Spook meets with Dern and promises trade contracts and a title to him in exchange for him clearing out the canals so that people aren't drowned when they are refilled. Vin awakens in chains and with no metals in her stomach to burn. Yeoman describes all the precautions that are in effect to keep Vin from escaping. Yeoman took Vin's earring to examine it and it confuses him since it is made of silver and bronze, a combination of little use to an alamancer. He allows her to take the earring back and she does putting it on. One of Ellen's soldiers is escorted in to ask Vin a question to verify that she is still alive and not a Chondra imposter. Yeoman says that she was captured to be tried for the murder of the Lord Ruler, though he will allow her to speak in her own defense. Ruin whispers to her to kill Yeoman. She is then taken to a cell for imprisonment. Spook works on a plan for Quellian to reveal his allomantic ability, feeling confident that Quellian is at the very least a misting. He discusses the plan with Beldra, who then asks to be allowed to write a letter to Quellian to convince him not to oppose Spook, and he gives her permission knowing that he can look over the letter beforehand. Ruin manifests within Vin's cell in order to gloat its victory over her, believing it had won, with her imprisoned and preservation dead. This need for gloating over her makes her realize just how human Ruin really is which in her eyes means that Ruin has weaknesses that can be exploited and tricked. With renewed hope, Vin knows she must escape. She realizes that she can still communicate with the Thousand Coloss under her command, but can't communicate intelligent thoughts to them, making them for the moment worthless to her. Sazed instructs Spook on how to activate the mechanism to divert the water back into the canals. Beldra requests more time to persuade Quellian, but Spook denies this as Beldra's letter to Quellian had already failed. Spook and the rest of the crew attend Quellian's speech that evening, leaving Beldra behind under watch. At the speech, chaos breaks out from the riots, and amidst it, Gordel's soldiers attack Quellian's men. Spook confronts Quellian, wishing to force him into using Alamancy, proving him a hypocrite to the onlookers. From the crowd, Beldra shouts out not to harm her brother. Surprised that she is there, Spook is then hit by a coin, and it dawns on him that Quellian is not the Alamancer. But his sister, Beldra, whom he always kept very close by, was a coin shot. The crowd notices this as well and pushes Beldra to the stage after roughing her up. Kelsier urges Spook to kill Beldra with a metal spike from the stage, and Spook realizes that Quillian can also see Kelsier. With a revelation, Spook knows what to do, and seeing a bronze spike protruding from Quillian's arm, removes it along with his own fragment of metal, and upon doing so, both his ability to burn pewter and Kelsier's apparition vanish. With the city burning from the riots, Spook realizes that he must reach the water mechanism that should have already been released had Beldra not incapacitated the operators on her mission to stop Spook from killing her brother. However, the Canton building is now on fire, with no way to reach the mechanism. 
Ignoring Beldra's pleas of protest, Spook relinquishes his tin, falling into complete numbness, for his constant burning of tin ruined his normal senses. Using this lack of feeling to his advantage, Spook enters the burning building and releases the water as the flames burn and tear his flesh away before finally collapsing. Part 5 Trust Ten soon reaches her toe, finding the after effect from the fires, noticing how the canals are now filled with water. Tensoon speaks with the crew who reveals Ven's location in Fadric City. Tensoon fears he will be too late in reaching her, but announces that he must go regardless. When asked why, he says it has to do with the Hero of Ages in the end of the world. He's surprised by Sazed's lack of interest in the subject. Vin is brought before Yeoman and attempts to escape, incapacitating multiple guards, but is put in her place by Yeoman, who is actively burning Atium. Vin stops resisting, and Yeoman tells her it is time for her to face trial for her actions against the Lord Ruler. He questions her on how she believes she was able to kill him. He dismisses all of it, of course, claiming it had to be part of the Lord Ruler's plans and that he was still alive, and faked his own death. Vin, aware of this man's misplaced beliefs, turns his logic against him, asking how she can be tried for murder if the Lord Ruler is not actually dead. And in a last ditch effort, reveals that her army is really here for the Atium. But Yeoman dismisses her, saying he is trying to figure out what the Lord Ruler wishes for him to do next. Elend finally returns with his Coloss and speaks with Hammond, who confirms Vin is alive and that things back in the central dominance are getting dire. Elend, with some reluctance, proclaims that in the morning they will launch a surprise attack against Yeoman and take the city. Spook awakens alive but severely burned, recovering slowly since he no longer possesses the ability to burn pewter. Sazed had given him some during his slumber just in case. Beldra is beside him and reveals happily that Spook somehow saved her brother and that he seems to act as he had before he took the mantle of the citizen. Beldra fondly calls Spook the hero of the city. Sazed, still reviewing the last of his religions, is annoyed that his inability to believe in any of the contradicting religions prevents him from having faith. Sazed overhears Tensoon giving farewell to Breeze, telling him to give his regards to the announcer, referring to Sazed. This phrase sparks something within Sazed, who rushes to catch up to the Chondra, asking him to repeat the phrase. Sazed checks his notes, which were changed by Ruin, to call him the Holy First Witness. Sazed asks how Tensoon knows the original phrase. Tensoon counters by saying why no one wonders what happened to Rashik's fellow Pac-Man. Breeze claims the Lord Ruler simply turned them into nobles. Sazed disputes this though, knowing that the Lord Ruler wouldn't want them to have both the power of Alamancy and Farakimi because they could challenge his rule. Tensoon Amused reveals that the Pac-Men were changed into Mist Wraiths and then into Chondra, forming the first generation. Sazed realizes that the Terrace religion, his religion, lives on, and asks Tensoon to take him to the Chondra. Tensoon agrees, hoping that the Terrace men can convince the Chondra what he failed to do, that the end of the world is indeed upon them. Ruin gloats to Vin about his pending victory. Vin listens to his ramblings, looking for clues to defeat him. Vin calls her guards to tell them she wants to make a deal with Yeoman, and that she has information for the Obligator. Yeoman seems tired, which he shouldn't be if he was burning pewter, leading Vin to realize that he is not a Mistborn, but rather an ATM Misting. She tells Yeoman to ask her any question, and he asks about Ellen's control of the Coloss. She speaks of how emotional allomancy combined with Duralamin is strong enough to perform this task. Yeoman says that Vin is part of the Lord Ruler's plans, and she plays along, stating that the Lord Ruler wanted her to meet Yeoman through the hunt for the storage caches. Yeoman has maps brought in, and Vin marks the location of the other caches on it. Vin notices the caches seem to be near mines, and she commands another map be brought before her, one with mineral deposits listed which reveals a pattern for the caches. All of them were constructed near sources of metal. 
Ben then realizes that Ruin was using her and Ellen to find the storage caches and speculates that Ruin can't see them through the metal, just as he is unable to change or see words engraved onto metal. Following this line of reasoning, Ben determines that Ruin has been manipulating her to find the ATM cache for some reason. Marsh, under Ruin's control, shows up, smiles at Ben, bows to Ruin, who is still seen as a ghostly manifestation of Ben's dead brother, Reen. Marsh tells Yeoman that an attack is imminent. Marsh reveals that he isn't there to protect the city, but rather to take the cache of Atium. Yeoman, dismayed, informs Marsh that there is no great cache, just the seven beads he had found, and that he had been bluffing to Ben about having more. Ruin screams in frustration at learning this. Yeoman pleads for help from Marsh in defending against the imminent Coloss invasion from Elend, but is rejected. Ruin, now in a fit of rage, has Marsh tell Yeoman that he was a worthless servant and that the Lord Ruler is dead. Vin interjects that Elend won't attack and offers an alliance to Yeoman having faith in Elend's good nature. Still recovering from his wounds, Spook in a dreamlike state hears a voice. Kelsier's voice, the real Kelsier, telling him to send a message to Vin detailing how Ruin can control individuals with metal in their body, warning of how Ruin is attempting to spike people in order to control them as he had done with both Spook and Quellian. He then awakens, writes the message in steel, and Gorodel, knowing its importance, offers to take it out of the city. Elend asks Hammond if attacking the city with his Coloss is the right thing to do. And Hammond replies that it isn't. With both Hammond, Preservation, and Ellen's own conscience telling him not to attack, Ellen orders the camp packed up and for them to return to Luthadel. Yeoman watches as a soldier states that Ellen's army is leaving Fadrix. Ruin is confused and angered by this, and Vin decides to bluff him, trusting in her assumptions. She claims to Ruin that they knew his plan all along, and that he can't find the ATM cache on his own since it blinds him. She says to him how they had already located and hid the cache right under his nose. Ruined Furious has Marsh grab Vin and yell at her to reveal the ATM's location, but Vin refuses. Marsh then orders Yeoman to attack Ellen's army, and Yeoman complies. Ellen and Hammond observe Yeoman's inferior force charging out to attack their army, but is suspicious of this and orders his army to retreat. Ruin taunts Vin, revealing to her that she was the one still being manipulated, for he was only letting them control the Koloss, and at any time he wished, they belonged to him. At that very moment, Ellen could feel control of the Koloss being ripped away from him, and the Koloss turned against him, attacking his own army. Marsh grabs Vin and tells her that the Lord Ruler essentially made his army of Inquisitors and Koloss for Ruin, since eventually they would all be his anyway. All he had to do was patiently wait. Marsh shakes Vin, who uses this opportunity with her years of growing up on the street and Reen's training to steal a metal vial from his sash and ingest it. She then removes her earring and Duralamin pushes it into Marsh's forehead. Marsh drops and Vin yells at Yeoman to withdraw his forces, but he refuses. Vin orders her Coloss to attack Yeoman's soldiers, finally convincing him by showing him that the Coloss will attack anyone. She loses control of them to ruin, but their purpose had been served. Yeoman, finally seeing the error in his misplaced faith, withdraws his forces and allows safe passage for Ellen and his army to enter. Marsh recovers from his wound and Vin hits him with a Duralamin soothing, but Marsh resists, growing in size like a ferrochemist thanks to his use of hemorrhagy on the terrace people. Marsh begins choking Vin, who in an act of desperation reaches for the mists, and is surprised that she is actually able to draw upon them, something she hasn't been able to do since her fight against the Lord Ruler. Empowered, she pushes on Marsh's emotions, breaking through the resistance successfully and sees through his eyes briefly, and within himself, Marsh can sense Ruin's fear in that moment. He is afraid of Vin. Ruin forces Marsh to flee. Vin, having retrieved her earring, puts it back in. Elend and his army fight desperately against the Coloss. Vin arrives ordering a retreat into Fadrix. 
Sazed rides Tensoon, who has taken the form of a very muscular horse, to the Chondra homeland. Tensoon tells of the creation and abilities of the Chondra, and about the other creatures of Ruin. Tensoon tells Sazed that Vin will lead an army of Alamancers to the homeland, and that Sazed is to convince the first generation how dire the situation is, since they have an obligation to fulfill. They arrive at the Chondra homeland, which turns out to be in a cave complex located near the pits of Hath Sin. Tensoon leaves and Sazed enters the Chondra tunnel and surprises a couple of Chondra guards who at Sazed's persuasion grant him entry. Elend, Vin, and Yeoman watch from inside Fadrix as an enormous army of Kolos gathers outside. A gigantic earthquake hits, reminding them of their inevitable doom. Vin again finds herself unable to draw in the mists. She decides to continue her bluff with Ruin and tells Ellen that she is going to retrieve the ATM, knowing that Ruin would be listening intently. Ellen, catching on to her ruse, plays along and Vin hurriedly leaves for Luthadel, baiting Ruin to pursue. Hoping that in creating a completely hopeless situation for herself, the mists will again come to her aid. Sazed is led to the Trust Warren and proclaims himself the announcer. An ever-growing crowd of Chondra surrounds him. Sazed tells them that he is Terris, as are the First Generation, who he requests to be granted audience to. Konpar declines his request and asks if he was sent by Ten Soon and what Sazed thinks he can say to make them change their minds. Sazed speaks of his specialty of studying religions and that he would like to study the Terrace religion for it is the only religion that is true and prophesies the exact events going on right now. Sazed also says they should read his ruin corrupted notes about the Hero of Ages and compare them with the original knowledge compiled by those who had lived through it the first generation, in order to see what Ruin is trying to conceal. The first generation appear, telling all the other Chondra to leave so they can speak with Sazed, the Worldbringer, alone. Marsh intercepts Gordel on his mission to deliver Spook's message to Vin, killing him but continuing to smash his axe into the corpse going into a bloodlust similar to the Coloss, and in the moment of his bloodlust he realizes Ruin has no control over him. Once it fades and Ruin has control of him once more, he commands Marsh to read Spook's message out loud so that Ruin can know what it says before destroying it. Ellen and Yeoman travel to the infirmary in the Canton building. A boy with a case of mist sickness is brought in whose pain reminds Ellen of when he was tested for allomancy as a child in an attempt to get him to snap leading Ellen to question Yeoman about the anomaly with the number 16. Yeoman, unperturbed, says 16 is a sacred number in the Lord Ruler's religious doctrine, and reveals that there must be 16 alimantic metals, with two being undiscovered, to fit the rule of 16. With a burst of revelation, Ellen realizes that the mists aren't trying to kill people or harm them without purpose. The mists, by command of preservation, are snapping the afflicted people in granting them alimantic abilities. Ellen tests his theory on a mist-fallen soldier and has him drink a concoction of metals and to his utter amazement is indeed able to burn a metal. Ruin, realizing what Ellen has discovered, sends his Coloss to attack. But Ellen wastes no time in having concoctions delivered to every Mistfallen person in order to manifest an army of Alamancers from the Mistfallen to fight the Coloss. Sazed in the first generation peruse Sazed's notes to try to find Ruin's alterations. Of the firsts, Haddock speaks of how Ruin and Preservation created the world and that a bargain was struck between them that Preservation could, with the help of Ruin, create life sentient, emotional humans at the cost of ruin one day being able to destroy it all. Preservation broke this deal and gave his life to imprison ruin and stop him from destroying the world. Sazed wonders how his religion has so much in common with many of the others that he has rejected. He explains his doubts and Haddock says that Sazed's quest to find a religion that requires no faith is fruitless since no such religion exists. Haddock explains that their god is preservation, not the Lord Ruler, and he tells of the gods being forces spread throughout the world, and that preservation gave of himself more to men than ruin, creating an imbalance of power 
in Ruin's favor. One that Ruin had been unable to capitalize on since preservation imprisoned him in the Well of Ascension. But now with Ruin free, he would be coming for his body, which has been gathered by the Chondra for generations. They allowed Sazed to see for himself and uncover a pit filled with a vast amount of Atium, referred to as the Trust. The Chandra describe how the Lord Ruler had the ATM mined from the pits and secretly all shipped and hidden away here with decoy shipments being sent to Luthadel, so that none would find the stockpile of ATM, for the ATM is Ruin's body, and with it, he would have the power to destroy the world. Tinsoon finds a large river of lava blocking his path to Fadrix, and feels despair that he won't be able to reach his destination in time due to the required detour. Vin reaches Luthadel, sensing at least a dozen Inquisitors in pursuit of her. She goes to Kretik Shaw, and Ruin questions her, saying his minions have already searched the Lord Ruler's palace for the ATM. Vin says she will never reveal the location of the ATM cache, and Ruin orders his Inquisitors, 13 in all, to attack her as as Marsh watches. She fights well, managing to kill one of the Inquisitors, but is eventually overpowered, and pleads for the Mists to aid her in her moment of desperation, but nothing happens. Marsh begins torturing her for information, breaking her arms and one of her legs, telling her to reveal the location of the ATM. Marsh, under Ruin's almost total control, breaks Vin's other leg and starts breaking her fingers, going into a full blood frenzy, creating an opening for him to be free from Ruin's control. He thinks of how Kelsier treated her as the daughter he and Mare never had, and how Kelsier had succeeded with the rebellion he had originally started and abandoned. He notices Vin's earring and remembers her story about how it was given to her by her insane mother, who had just murdered Vin's baby sister before forcing the earring into Vin. Marsh then thinks of the note he had intercepted from Gorodel, the one Kelsier's voice had insisted spook right, discussing the dangers of any metal piercing the body, and without hesitation, Marsh rips the hemallergic spike disguised as an earring out of Vin's ear. And upon doing so, the mists rapidly begin flowing into her. She uses their power to heal her injuries and grapple with Marsh. Tinsoon senses a change in the mists and notices that instead of swirling chaotically, they seem to all be flowing towards Luthadel. He feels invigorated by this and heads towards the capital. Orian alerts Breeze to the odd behavior by the mists. Spook tells Breeze to have everyone in her tow gather immediately into the storage cache. Ellen and Hammond notice the change in the mists, but are busy with the battle against the Coloss army until suddenly the Coloss withdraw, all heading toward Luthadel. Realization rushes through Vin like a wave. Ruin had manipulated her insane mother into using hemallergy to charge an earring by killing Vin's sister, who must have been a misting seeker and then spiking Vin with the earring, granting Vin the ability to pierce copper clouds. An invaluable ability to have when overthrowing the Lord Ruler and his Inquisitors, plus with the added benefit of giving Ruin the means to influence Vin's every move, in a grand plan beginning with the fall of the final empire and ending in his release from the Well of Ascension and her assistance in tracking down his body, all the while making her think it was her idea by appearing to her in the form of her dead brother's voice. But now, with the power of the mists fueling her like an endless metal reserve, Vin decimates the twelve remaining Inquisitors. Her alamancy begins having a godlike amount of power. She slaughters the Inquisitors with an uncomfortable ease. Her final steel push has so much force behind it that the entirety of Kretik Shaw is blown away, ripping the Lord Ruler's once palace apart. Marsh is the only Inquisitor remaining. He revels in the knowledge that whatever he did worked, and that in the end, he was able to succeed at something and had done right by Mare, the woman that he also loved. Grasping at that thought gives him comfort in what he knows will be his final moments. Vin approaches him and pulls out one of his eye spikes, while the mists finally finish flowing into her. She coughs, 
then vanishes before she can kill him. Ellen and Yeoman discuss the disappearance of the mists in the unusual heat. Ellen orders everyone to gather inside the storage cavern. Yeoman gives his bead of Atium to Ellen and reveals that he is a seer in Atium misting. Ellen leaves to find Vin. Sazed learns a great deal about the Chondra and their god, Preservation, whom they call Ter, which translates into to preserve. The Terrace prophecies speak of the Hero of Ages being Preservation's successor. Sazed begins to realize that Breeze may have been right in saying that he is not meant to be an atheist. Having come to a decision, Sazed returns to the first generation in order to learn about the first contract, his faith returned. He reaches the trust warren, which is crowded with Chondra who are discussing the sudden disappearance of the mists, fearing what it means. Konpar orders the Chondra to disperse, but Haddock states the day of the resolution may be at hand, and orders all the Chondra to leave. Haddock asks Sazed to advise them and tell Sazed about the resolution, a very important clause the Lord Ruler put into the first contract, which states that all Chondra are to remove their blessings if ordered by the first generation, and that the first generation would know when this would need to be done. Essentially, a mass suicide. Haddock speaks of the mists being preservation's body. Sazed hypothesizes that someone has taken up the power of preservation with the mists now absent. At that moment, a number of Chondra show up led by Konpar to depose the first generation. Sazed argues but is bound and imprisoned along with the first generation. Vin is floating above Luthadel, full of an immense, almost incomprehensible power, the same sort of power she held at the Well of Ascension. She encounters ruin in the form of a cloud of shifting smoke. He welcomes her to godhood. Vin's awareness and understanding expand greatly, and she sees that the planet is rapidly dying. She instantly begins trying to fix problems, but with every attempt is a chain of unwanted reactions. Ruin laughs at her futile efforts and blocks her from keeping a tidal wave from hitting some cities. Ruin speaks of his frustrations at the balance between their two forces, like Alamancy pushes and pulls having consequences. He then speaks of Preservation's desire to create humanity, which created an imbalance in Ruin's favor. This makes Vin realize that she and Ruin are currently balanced, but won't be if Ruin finds his body, which is the Atium. Vin sees Ellen heading to Luthadel. Ellen finds the ruins of Cretic Shaw and searches through Luthadel for Vin, wondering what could have caused such wreckage. He finds Penrod's corpse at Keep Venture with a note saying how he took his own life before causing any more destruction. Ellen tries to figure out where the people of Luthadel went. He hears a familiar voice whisper to him, West the pits. Unbeknownst to Ellen, the voice was Vin, who had expended a great amount of effort communicating with Ellen because of Ruin's interference. Tensoon rescues Sazed in the first generation from their imprisonment in the homeland. He then impersonates a fellow Chondra to buy time for the firsts to regenerate. Vin senses a change and follows Ruin to the pits of Hath Sin, where she sees a refugee camp where the terrorists are helping shelter people. She sees something shining brightly and hears Konpar order some Atium to be sold so that they could become rich and rule instead of serve. Vin feels a new appreciation for the lengths the Lord Ruler went in concealing the Atium for all those years. Ruin seizes control of Konpar and demands to know where the Atium is. Ellen arrives at the pits of Hath Sin and sees some of his soldiers there, the Mistfallen he had sent away with Demu. The first generation have now fully regenerated and Tensoon reappears and begins attacking Sazed, though he resists and warns Sazed of Ruin's manipulation of him. Other Chondra begin to shake, about to be taken by Ruin, so Haddock yells out that the resolution has come. Tensoon reaches for his shoulder with one hand, but keeps choking Sazed into unconsciousness with the other. Demu tells Ellen that there are several hundred thousand refugees at the pits. Ellen is concerned since an army of Coloss is heading toward them, with no city walls or defenses for protection. Demu tells Ellen that the refugees came to the pits because Kelsier told them to. Ellen asks to speak to the men who saw Kelsier and to have the mist fallen consume alimantic metals. Sazed wakes up to the aftermath of the mass suicide, now among a large group of mist wraiths. 
He leaves to seek out and protect the ATM and discovers that some of the Chondra didn't remove their spikes. Led by Conpar, Sazed sees the Chondra trying to remove the ATM from the trust and deliver it to Ruin. Sazed is discovered and taps his steel mind for speed to reach his sack of metal mines and grab his charged pewter mind and iron mind. He closes and blocks the doorway to the trust worn with his body using the extra weight and strength and pleads for help. Ellen questions the eyewitnesses but isn't sure whether to believe them or not about Kelsier. Ellen hears his name whispered in the wind once again and thinks it's Vin. The voice guides him, showing him a specific location in his mind. Accompanied by Demu and several soldiers, the voice leads Ellen to the Chondra's homeland. He is surprised when he sees Sazed, who, strained, quickly tells Ellen to stop the group of Chondra that lie behind the door he is blocking. Ellen and the soldiers comply, easily incapacitating them. Sazed tells Ellen of the ATM horde, but Ellen is more concerned about the people and orders them to take refuge in the caverns before the Coloss arrive. Vin watches as the refugees flee to the Chondra caverns. Ruin continues to taunt her. She sees the approaching doom and grows angry, throwing herself at Ruin. This surprises Ruin as he did not think attacking was possible due to preservation's intent. She is not able to defeat Ruin since they are too evenly matched. Sazed tells Ellen that the ATM is Ruin's body and that if he gets it, he will destroy the world. Sazed, with a renewed faith, claims that Vin will come and save them. Demu arrives and gives a status report on their forces, informing Ellen that his mist-fallen soldiers took the medals, but none of them showed allomantic abilities. Ellen has Demu eat an ATM bead, and Demu is able to burn it, and Ellen deduces that his group are all seers, which makes sense as to why they took longer to heal from the sickness than other mist-fallen had. Vin watches as Ellen gives a speech to motivate his soldiers into a final stand against Ruin's forces. She pleads for him not to fight, fearing his demise, but he and his men rush out to attack. Ellen and his group begin glowing brightly, and she realizes they are all burning ATM. Ellen and his soldiers fight a seemingly endless onslaught of Coloss, weaving in between attacks and dispatching them easily thanks to ATM's future seeing ability, burning through an exhaustive amount of it with Sazed on hand to resupply them from the trust. Ruin is frustrated by the resistance and attempts to attack Vin but is rebuffed. Sazed watches the battle telling those nearby that Vin, who he believes as the hero of ages, will appear. Ellen and his army of seers have been fighting for hours and are beginning to become overwhelmed by the seemingly never-ending onslaught of Coloss. Marsh appears before Ellen, burning Atium, and challenges him. Human leads a group of Coloss through the Chondra tunnels and reach the Trust, believing they have found Ruin's body. Ruin screams in delight. Marsh attacks Ellen, burning the Atium he got from a Chondra. Ellen's pewter runs out, but he is still able to burn pewter somehow. He looks up and sees Vin's angelic spirit form aiding him in the fight, granting him some of her power. Ellen, fueled with the power provided by his love, burns Duralaman in Atium, giving him a flash of insight, a flash of preservation's plan. Following this, Ellen buries his sword into Marsh's neck as Marsh's axe takes him in the chest. However, Marsh is able to heal his wound while Ellen isn't. Marsh claims victory over him, but Ellen says that he is wrong, for he had succeeded in his mission of using up every single bit of Atium, leaving no body for Ruin to consume. Human searches the trust where the Atium was stored and finds it empty. Vin watches as Marsh decapitates Ellen with Ruin gloating over her, with nothing left to lose now that Ellen the only one she could ever want was dead. Vin attacks Ruin using the entire force of the power granted to her, ignoring the pain that accompanies using preservations of power to attack. She refuses to retreat even knowing that the opposite nature of their shards will kill her. She persists, destroying both herself and Ruin in the process. Sazed remains at the cave entrance, accompanied only by Demu, who is badly injured and missing a hand. The heat from the sun is overpowering and they can see the Coloss continuing to rampage. But Sazed believes in Vin, believes that she will save them. And then he sees the bodies of Vin and a stranger, Ati, the name of the man who took up the shard and became Ruin.
Their bodies materialize beside Ellen's corpse. Sazed cries out in anguish and despair, then he notices white mist and black smoke leaking from Vin and the stranger, and he reaches out to take the powers, but hesitates, unsure in his ability to use the powers intelligently. He glances at his copper mines on his arms, and remembers the prophecies and realizes that he fits them perfectly. Sazed is the hero of ages, and so having faith, takes both the powers in and withdraws the knowledge from his copper mines, using the wisdom passed down by the religions he studied. He is able to restore the world and its people to its original form before the Lord Ruler had altered it when combating the deepness. Says it is able to bring back the vast blue sky, the green grass and the yellow sun, guided by his copper mines he had forsaken. Sazed finally realizes the importance of all those religions and the knowledge hidden within. Sazed had blended the opposing forces of preservation and ruin to become harmony, and with it, watch over their world, Scadriel. Epilogue Spook wakes up magically healed from all his wounds and accompanies Beldra, Breeze, and Orian out of their storage cache. They exit to find a green field of grass under a blue, ashless sky. Erto is gone without a trace. It dawned on them that they had won. They encounter Hammond along with other people who had been in Fadric City. The other caverns all nearby continue flowing with a consistent trickle of people, all exiting to discover their new world. Among them, Hammond's family and Demu. They stumble upon a majestic field of flowers with the bodies of Vin and Ellen hands held, spread out in their center, perfectly preserved in an internal resting place. Spook finds a book written by Seiza describing the events leading up to the rebirth of Scadriel, and other tomes that contain the information from Seiza's metal mines to be used to rebuild and surpass the limited technological advancements the Lord Ruler had allowed. Seiza claims he was unable to bring Vin and Ellen back, but has spoken to them and they are quite happy. He also talks of how Rashik had prepared well for this event, and in the end, was a good man. The book also mentions that Sazed, by request of Kelsier, turned Spook into a full Mistborn, reversing the effects of his Ten Savant ability, and that there are indeed two more undiscovered Alimantic metals that Spook may find interesting. Spook finds the picture of the flower passed from Mare to Kelsier to Vin to Sazed and finally to him. The picture contains Kelsier's unspoken promise to his love mare that he would restore the world. That promise is now fulfilled. Spook pockets the picture and assures Beldra that everything is going to be alright. Finally. Finally.